While he's getting that loaded up again, I'd like to thank you all for the invitation and the ability to be here today um, and talk for you for a few minutes about some of the things that the asphalt industry is doing. And I'm really updating you on the National Asphalt Pavement Association and some of the work that we're doing, but also the Asphalt Pavement Alliance. Now, I'm sure many of you know who NAP is. We represent the contractors who produce asphalt mix, very similar to ACPA representing the concrete pavement producers. But the Asphalt Pavement Alliance is something that you may not necessarily understand what it is. It is a partnership between the National Asphalt Pavement Association, the Asphalt Institute, and the State Asphalt Pavement Associations to ensure people understand the value that asphalt can provide them. We try to make sure that people see it as the pavement type of choice, look at different national efforts and state efforts that we can do to ensure that we stay in front of people's mind. Now, related to this meeting, I couldn't spend but a few minutes making sure that we understand. We represent a lot of times in the pavement preservation world those mixed producers who produce the product that we call Thinlay. It is a thin asphalt overlay that is strong, durable. It is a great pavement preservation technique that specifically when we're looking at ensuring that we get a smooth ride after a preservation technique is done. So we're looking at what a Thinlay can provide people. It can specifically help make sure that we have safety is enhanced after a preservation. It looks at fuel consumption and the smooth ride helps make sure that we have the best fuel economy possible and it also allows us to continue to use our recycled materials. Now, we know about Thinlays. What I wanted to do today is introduce you to some of the programs and some of the tools that have been developed over the past couple of years that could really bring value. And one of the things very similar to what ACPA produced or mentioned was looking at sustainability in the future related to that. In 2022, Napa released a program called The Road Forward, which was the asphalt industry's vision of what we could look like in 2050 and how we're going to achieve net zero. Now, a lot of that is things that we have to do at our asphalt mix plants and choices that we have to make. But the reality is we have to partner with the owners. We have to partner with the specifiers to look at how can we achieve some of these goals. We have to think about doing things outside of the box and differently. And one of the things that we have in the road for that many people don't realize is there are bullets in this long list of laundry items that we need to be a part of. And exploring how preservation is going to get us there is a part of that. And I realize that I can work with the people producing thin lace and help them understand how they can be a part of that. But we need to start reaching out to the people who are looking at the seals. We need to look at people producing emulsions and we need to figure out how do we make a flexible pavement net zero by 2050 and what's that going to look like. So the road forward is where we're hoping to partner with these individuals and partner with these other associations and groups to figure out how do we work this together because we realize we can't do it alone. Things are going to have to change and we're going to have to be willing to think outside of the box of what we could look like in a few years as a different type of industry. It was briefly mentioned in the last presentation as well but one of the tools that NAPA can help provide for the preservation community related to thin lays is today we can produce on-demand EPDs for thin lay mixtures. Contractors can go into the NAPA Emerald Eco label, which we released in 2017, and produce real-time what it, your environmental product declarations for you. It's a program that's relatively cheap for a contractor to use. It doesn't require a lot of time. It's kind of like TurboTax, but for EPDs. They go in, they put their information in, and out pops a verified EPD because the program has been verified. We're consistently trying to update this tool, make it more user-friendly, but stay with the science and make sure that it's available so that as state DOTs are starting to explore EPDs for sustainable product delivery in Everyday Count 7, or as people are starting to partner with the federal government on Buy Clean, this is a tool that customers can provide data for you for if you're an owner and looking for it. Another tool, and this one was one that if you had asked me on January 1st if NAPA was going to get into artificial intelligence over the course of the year, I would have laughed in your face. But in March, we had a, cus uh, a member come up to us and say, so we've heard recently that you've got a lot of great publications, but your members are having trouble finding them in your store. What if we could harness ChatGDP4 and train a specific program to be the asphalt industry ChatGDP source for you? And in July, we rolled out Hey Napa. 
a ChatGDP system that was trained on asphalt documents. We used the NAPA resources that we've been developing for the past 20 years and put it into this, and it will answer your asphalt questions for you. What's better? Today we started putting 450 FHWA documents into this as well as a partnership with them. We've got FAA that's going to be putting some of their resources into this in the near future. NCAT reports are going to be coming in. This is the source. If you have an asphalt question, you can get your answer. And then unlike some sources in ChatGDP, it won't just give you an answer. It'll give you a link to the page where they pulled the information from. You can go to the source document to understand how did he come, or how did Hey Napa come up with this answer? Is it always right? No, it's like anything, it's learning. But you can ask follow-up questions, you can develop curriculum for people. Um, I've gotten it to develop, basically write a white paper for me on something. It's a way that we can get the right information to people very quickly and ensure that we have a constantly evolving and learning workforce in front of us. And the final shameless plug I wanted to put in for today was if you're not aware, we extended our abstract submission time to October 1st for the Perpetual Pavement Conference in Louisville next year. And the reason I push this is because, yeah, a lot of things related to perpetual pavements are how do I design it? Another major part of it is how do I preserve it? I want to encourage you to be a part of this conference, to be a part of that conversation when we meet in October of next year in Louisville, Kentucky. Because the reality is, if we want to build something to last, we have to be willing to preserve it. We have to be willing to look at the things and the tools that we have and figure out how do we make it as long as possible. And I realize that there are some of you that are out there going, I am never going to write a 12 page paper for a conference related to that. And that's great, you don't have to. One of the things that we're doing with this conference to encourage some of the contractors, some of the agencies who may not have the time to put into that is, you can submit an extended abstract or an extended brief, which is a three to four page little summary of what you wanted to talk about and what you did. And you can get in front of an audience and be able to tell your story on that stage. So please come be a part of it. Make sure that preservation is represented at this meeting as well, because we all need to be thinking, if we're gonna to get to net zero by 2050, this is our, one of the steps in that process. So I realize this was kind of like speed dating with Napa in 15 minutes, uh, but if you have any questions, if we have a minute or two, I'd be happy to try to take them at this time. Well, thank you very much.